Okay, this happens to be problem 49 off of uh, A2.5.3, part 2. First step is always going to be to factor these tops and bottoms. So I'm going to start with the GCF off of the top. And I can see that the bottom is going to factor into x plus 2 and x minus 1. If you need practice factoring, you should be doing that on your own. Uh, the top isn't finished factoring. I can see that that's going to factor into x plus 4 and x minus 3. No, that's not right either. Let's try that again. How about x plus, uh, I'm sorry, x minus 3 and x minus 1 for the top. And the bottom is still x plus 2 and x minus 1. So if I go through the process of identifying all the different parts for this thing, I can see that there is a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2. There is a hole at x equals 1. I still need to find the coordinate of that hole. So it's going to be at 1 comma something, which I don't know yet. The x-intercept, let's see, I've taken care of these two. I've gotten the vertical asymptote. The x-intercept is going to be at x equals 3. So that means that the coordinate 3 comma 0. The y-intercept, remember, is when we let x equal 0. So I'm plugging a 0 in for x. So I have a 4 and then 0 minus 3 and a 0 minus 1 and a 0 plus 2 on the bottom and a 0 minus 1 on the bottom. So that's going to give me a 4 and a negative 3 and a negative 1 and a 2 and a negative 1. These negative ones cancel. And I'm going to be left with a negative 6. So my y-intercept is 0 comma negative 6. Uh, I'll come back to the domain and the range in just a little bit after I've got the picture finished. So the other thing I want to figure out is what's the horiz I'm sorry, the words the location of the hole. So if you recall from my instructions on previous videos, to find the location of the hole, you ignore the two factors that cause the hole, these two guys. So you kind of pretend like you cross those out, even though we don't technically do that yet. And we plug in that x value in for what remains. So I plug it in for the 1, I'm sorry, for the x, and for the x. And so on the top I've got 4 times negative 2, and on the bottom I've got a 3. So that's going to be ugh, negative 8 thirds. And that's kind of a gross number, but that's all right. We'll get it in there as best we can. For the horizontal asymptote, I look at the degree of the top. So the degree of the top is a second degree. The degree of bottom is also second degree. So they're equal. That means I need to look at the lead coefficients. So it's going to be y equals the uh, lead coefficient over the lead coefficient. So in this case, it's going to be y equals 4. That's the lead coefficient there. And that lead coefficient there. So y equals 4. So I've got quite a bit of things that I can start adding to my graph right now. So I've got y equals 4 is a horizontal asymptote. So there we go. y equals 4. Horizontal asymptote. We had a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2. Remember, use dotted lines for your vertical asymptotes and horizontal asymptotes. Don't forget to label them each. x equals negative 2. We said there was going to be a hole at 1 comma negative 8 thirds, which is like negative 2.6. So maybe right around there. Uh, there's also going to be an x-intercept at 3 comma 0 solid dot there, and a y-intercept at 0, negative 6. So already I can kind of see what's going to happen down here. I know that this graph is probably coming up through here and going through those points and sweeping up this way. Uh, I'm probably off a little bit up there, but I am going to need to find a few points in this vicinity. So I'm going to pick a few points like maybe negative, uh, I don't know, negative 4 and negative 6 and negative 8. Some of those are probably not going to be great, but I'm just going to pick some numbers to try and we'll plug those in. So f of negative 4 means I'm going to put a 4 and then a negative 4 minus 3 and a negative 4 minus 1. 
and a negative 4 plus 2 and a negative 4 minus 1. These factors are going to cancel because they're the same. So I've got a 4 times a negative 7 and a negative 2 on the bottom. Ugh, it's kind of gross, but not the worst thing in the world. I think we end up with a <coughs> positive 14, which is unfortunately off the graph. Well, that's too bad. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. All right, let's try f of negative 6. So I plug a negative 6 in and a negative 6 in. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and let's see, that's a negative 9 and that's a negative 4. And those are going to cancel and leave me with a positive 9. Okay, well, that's a little bit better. So negative 6, positive 9. Oh, that's way up here. All right, and then we're going to do negative 8, one last one, just to see if we can find another point. So we got 4, oops, 4, and negative 8 minus 3, and negative 8 minus 1, and negative 8 plus 2, and negative 8 minus 1. These cancel, those are the same. We've got a 4 and a negative 11. And a negative six. Oh, yucky grossness. Who picked this problem? So I'm going to get a negative 22 over negative three or a positive 22 thirds. That's like, what, like eight, you know, seven, seven point something. I don't know what it is exactly, but I'm close enough. So negative eight comma six, seven, eight, seven point something is up here. That's enough for an estimated graph. doesn't have to be perfect. What I am looking for is evidence that you have all of the pieces there. So the last thing that we're missing is the domain, which is going to be all real numbers except for the restricted values. So we can't have the whole, which is at positive 1, and we can't have the vertical asymptote at negative 2. And for the range, it's all real values except for the horizontal asymptote, which was at 4, and weirdly enough, also the uh, negative 8 thirds that we got from the whole. All right, so there's my final answer. The only thing I might want to do is, as I'm practicing these things, is I might want to check to see whether I've got it right. So here I've typed this function in, and uh, boy, I don't see any, oh, I don't have it on. There we go. Let's activate the function on Desmos. There we go. We got a root. We got our y-intercept. We said there was going to be a hole at 1, comma, negative 8 thirds. And there it is. Pretty darn close. It's kind of hard to see where it's at, but it's negative 8 thirds. We said there was a horizontal asymptote at y equals 4. Yep, we agree with that. A vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2. That looks right. And then we had a few points that we were going to check. Like uh, negative 6, 9, that was one that we can check rock solidly. Oops, here we go. Negative 6, negative 6, 9, and yep, there it is. All right, so we've got it. So there's my example for...